Yeah, well, we had such a great discussion last time, so I hope people will check that out as well. But um, today we want to hear all about your uh, summer camp program. So first of all, where are you guys located? We are located in Chicago um, in a traditional year or in the before times, as I say, we are right downtown um, in the loop in Chicago. Okay, cool. And so speaking of before times, I think we might have to split this discussion into kind of two parts because <laughs> you've been running a camp for a while now. Um, yeah, this is our 17th summer this year. Wow. Now, yeah. I, I just got a weird message pop up here. And so, you know, we're going to roll with this because it's live. There's not sufficient disk space to continue recording. So that is unfortunate. Um, not sure what to do about that. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, um, pandemic, Zoom, virtual, all this good stuff. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you, so you said uh, 17 years you've been running a camp. So let's talk about what your camp looked like before the pandemic, uh, because presumably someday you'll get back to that. Uh, That's the goal. <laughs> so tell us about your yeah. camp. Yeah, so we run uh, two two-week programs in July, um, and our camp is very specifically for um, young people who've experienced the death of a parent. Um, so we uh, service uh, ages seven through 14 year olds. Um, our first session is for ages seven to 10 year olds and our second is for 11 to 14 year olds so that we can very specifically look at the needs of um, those campers. Grief is dealt with in really different ways based on your age um, and your development. So we really hone in on that. Um, we are run through the auditorium theater. So we are a performing arts program mm. um, that is 100% percent our focus is healing through the arts and healing through community and active play. Um, so within our time at camp, campers take classes in music, theater, and dance every single day. Um, and we do two shows per session. So the end of the first week, we do a talent show. Um, and the end of the second week, we do our final show, kind of showcasing what our campers have learned at camp. Um, so that, and then there's a million other things, but that's kind of the basic element of, of what we do. Um, and we, again, repeat that for our second session as well right with it with the other age group uh okay. so and what is the like grief grieving children component here uh in terms of what services do they get or how well, does that all work well yeah and also like well i guess who, first of all who is the camp for so it's for um kids whose parents have died uh parents okay. are primary caregivers very right. specifically um in terms of that loss um and uh, we have a very robust clinical component that goes along with everything as well. So um, we have three clinicians on site full time. That's our clinical director. Um, and we also always have two MSW interns um, who work with us throughout the summer. They do full clinical intakes of our campers as well coming in um, and work to support our campers in whatever they need day to day. So if they are if something comes up in a moment, if they're struggling with something, we have that there as a resource. Um, but then throughout camp, we have a larger clinical staff as well who comes in about three times per session to do small group therapy with our campers. Um, so they get uh, some resources. We really think of it as tiptoeing into therapy. This should not be a replacement for larger supports that a family or individual might need, but really just allowing them a safe space with kids who've experienced something similar to them to talk and be and discuss or not. No one ever has to talk about their loss if they don't want to. Um, but a couple of days before the end of camp, we do have a culminating memorial um, for the parents who have died where we invite uh, you know, the family and community of the campers in as well. Um, and, we, and we work to honor that parent uh, and kind of close out the clinical portion of our, of our camp. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Wow, it sounds like you've got a really great program. Uh, and so, Correct me if I'm not remembering this correctly. I think when we talked before, I remember that you have something for teenagers who are alumni of the camp to come back and get involved. Yeah, yeah, that's our junior counselor program. So for teenagers who are 15 through 18 um, who have gone to camp, so they've experienced the death of a parent and experienced our program, um, we welcome them back. They have to go through an application and interview, but they become our junior counselors. Um, and it's really a very intensive mentorship program. Um, some of them only do two weeks, some we invite to do the full summer um, with us, but they really are very, very valued parts of our team. They are absolutely critical. Um, 
many of our campers talk about them as the people they feel closest with and they work full days alongside of our staff. They continue to get their own healing groups and clinical resources. Um, they get transfer that over to our junior counselors. So our uh, JCs who are interested um, go through a training to share, uh, to be able to uh, responsibly and healthfully share their stories with our community. Mm, terrific. Yeah. yeah, great. Okay, and this, uh, what time of year do you hold this camp? It's throughout July. So okay. this year, because of where the fourth falls, it'll be a little later. But uh, this year, we start July 12th and go through August 6th. Okay, okay, that's for 2021 then, for ne for this yeah. coming up. Okay, great. Yeah. And since we don't know yet what 2021 is going to look like with the pandemic, uh, and I know this year you had to, to pivot and do something a little different, can you tell us about what your virtual camp was like this year so that we know, you know, where things Absolutely. may or may not go in the future? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm really proud of what we did this year. So first of all, uh, we did not use the word virtual. I've made that a, a bad word in our community. Uh, no, because virtual means not real. And it also, by the time we got around to camp, um, had very negative implications, I think, for all of us who'd been dealing with that in school and work. Sure. So we referred to it as um, an at home or a distanced program, um, as opposed to a virtual program, because what we were doing was very, very real. Yeah, um, that makes we sense. ran the full camp program. So the same age groups separated, um, both had full two weeks. Camp still ran from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day. Um, and we broke camp up into three um, online times and then two independent learning times. Um, so we would still do all of our classes um, and our clinical programs and everything else. We would just do it online. Um, and then each camper every week received a giant care package from us that was hand delivered to their door. Actually, they received two. They received one for the individual camper and one for the camper's family. Um, and that would contain all of the supplies that they needed to participate in camp. Um, we also dealt with technology needs. So if our campers didn't have access to technology that they needed for camp, we helped supply uh, computers and in some cases, internet access to them as well. Hmm. Um, our camp is always at no charge to our families. And we've always has included a lot of food. Campers uh, have two snacks a day and lunches with us. So in the family package, we sent home a variety of different snacks and foods and activities um, for the families as well. Um, for example, we always do a birthday celebration for our campers with big cupcake lunch. So we sent home, everyone got their own make it yourself cupcake packet, um, nice. sprinkles and icing for them to enjoy at home. Uh -huh. um, and then we added in evening programming this week or this year. So three times a week, we would have optional evening programming. We would have a movie night um, once a week. We would have um, a live arts night, as we call it. So we watch a piece of theater because, again, we're a performing arts programs, so theater, or dance or something like that. And then on Wednesdays, my favorite, we would play Chopped. Um, so in their, uh -huh. in their box, they would receive a mystery box with four random ingredients and then someone from our team would Facebook live us taking these four ingredients and making a meal out of it and we would encourage our campers and their families to join us and post things and post their own videos um so how we had fun. a great time yeah, yeah. oh that's terrific well it sounds like you guys really got creative and thought through how to make a really great experience this year we learned a ton and certainly we all missed not being able to be in person and hug each other and kind of have that energy, but it was really pretty phenomenal. Even during the offline times, we, in the boxes, there were all kind of choose your own adventure things, both which campers could use technology for or independent resources for. And we always made sure that we had someone available online for our campers. So if people wanted to stay and eat lunch and hang out, we would run workshops during those times. We'd run games. We still ran pre and post care. So so that if um, caregivers at home needed to be working during those times, we tried to provide as much of the support as we provide in person on a different platform. Um, and I was really surprised. I thought after three hours of Zoom, especially our little ones would be running away for lunch, but people stayed and ate lunch together and played trivia games or would watch movies or participate in all of the workshops because it really is um, a very tight knit and special community. How fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it sounds like you guys are well covered in 2021, whether you can go back to in-person, whether you need to do something remote again. Um, it sounds like there's lots of great options. So, so if people are near you, where can people mm -hmm. find Hearts to Art? 
So check out our website, hearts2art.org. So that's all spelled out, H-E-A-R-T-S-T-O-A-R-T.org. All of the information you need is on there. Our applications just went live um, last week because we are such a full service program. We do have a very strict limit in terms of how many campers we let in. So sooner you fill out that application, the sooner that saves your spot. Um, and uh, so we really encourage people to do that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we love having everyone and that's where you can find us and find out how to reach me and reach the rest of our team as well. Terrific. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for speaking with me live today. Thank you so much for everything.